I got quite the story for you. So when I was in the, the swing of COVID a couple weeks ago when I first got it, um, it was pretty rough the first day. Had a really bad headache and like fever and, and just like a lot of fatigue and smell loss. And, and I was going through some stuff, but I just didn't really have much energy, but I felt okay my breathing was fine. But I'm just kind of sitting around. Haja and I are like quarantined upstairs and just resting and relaxing and taking care of ourselves. Um, and she was reading some books and I was looking through all our books and we have a lot of books, a lot of good books and just nothing was grabbing my attention. In fact, there hasn't been a book that's grabbed my attention in quite some time. So I'm just like, well, I'm just not meant to read right now. That's okay. And then a package arrives in the mail and I open the package and it's a book. It's this book. All this is all, it's this. there's no, literally no like cover. It's just this lady it says Peace Pilgrim. And there's some reviews on the back about it. And that was it. And at first, to be honest, I was like, all right, what is this one of those like scams? Cause they were like, thank you for your interest in Peace Pilgrim. You know, here's a free copy of the book for you. And, and so there's some pamphlets and stuff. And I thought it was one of those things where they're like just sending you, you know, it's one of those, I don't know what religious type culty or whatever things they send you a book. And then next thing you know, like they make it seem like it's free and you're roped in. So I was a little skeptical. And, but then I started reading and I was so quickly entranced by this woman's story. Um, so she belongs to no organization. Granted, now that she's passed, she passed away in like 83. It's been a long time. Um, you know, I think there are people that send out her books and what, whatnot. I still have no idea who sent this to me. But basically it's a, a lady who from 1953 to 1981 basically became a peace pilgrim and just walked around the country, you know, and she's gone as far as Canada and Mexico, and all by foot. Um, um, she even went to Alaska, Hawaii, I'm guessing not totally by foot in those regards, but she just walked everywhere. She had no possessions. She carried nothing with her. She just had shoes on. She had, which, you know, but she, she had very simple shoes. She said, she's like, I feel like I'm walking barefoot. Shoes on, pants, like some sh shorts underneath and a shirt and like blouse and whatever. And she just walked for peace and just basically spreading a message of truth and not living in fear and how to live in truth and how to like live this good life and spread peace. And I've just felt so resonant with her story. And so first off, if you wanna get, I'm sure there's a website or something now, or you just search for Peace Pilgrim. They sent me this book literally for free. Another cool thing is with my books, like I don't like having too much on them either. So I like that there's like nothing but just her. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so one of the reasons I wanted to share this story is because I feel a lot of resonance with her journey and I mean she you can look up her name and her background but she gave that all up and just started walking and one of the cool things is she was in such a deep state of trust that she literally slept anywhere she was never here's the other here's the crazy part she was never she never ate unless she was offered food she never asked for food or for shelter or for water she was only ate and drank and slept places when she was offered which she said was a lot but Sometimes she would just fall asleep like in a cemetery or on a grassy field or under a bridge or, you know, if she was offered to be to get to sleep on a convenience store you know, or a gas station floor, she would sleep there. Like she just slept anywhere and she learned how to live extremely simply and just with nothing. She didn't even carry water as she's walking, you know, 25, 30 miles a day sometimes, maybe more by foot just around the country. And she did plan for, you know, seasonal stuff. So she was going to warmer places when it was warmer. Um, and so there was, you know, there was a lot to it, but she discovered so much about it. Even with showering, she's like, I don't need to use shampoo. I can, I find creeks along the way and I jump in with my clothes on. I'm, my skin's waterproof, so I just jump in and boom. So one of the reasons I wanted to share this also is that I had this incredible day recently. I, I hadn't been running, you know, since getting COVID. Um, I hadn't had that much energy, but it was starting to come back, starting to feel like, you know, not only myself again, but like an upgraded version of myself. So one day I went out and basically just this, literally I had these even shorter shorts on with no pockets, no shirt, no shoes, no problem. And I just started running along the trail. And my first idea was like, oh, I'm just gonna do a short run. I'm gonna go along the trail and I'll just like scurry around and you know, have a good time. Um, and next thing you know, I found myself going a lot further. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the creek. So I ran all the way to the creek. It's, I don't know, three miles or so. Um, jumped in the creek with my clothes on. Cause like she said, she's like, I just go in the water, you know, take off what I need and I just go in the water with my shorts and my shirt 
and my skin is waterproof and, and I dry it, just keep walking and I dry. So I did that and I kept walking and I ended up finding some wild apples, which she said along the way, you know, she will forage for food. She'll find wild apples and fruits and that takes care of her water intake mostly. Fruit is like the purest form of water, most structured water anyway. Um, I met some homeless people. I gave them some apples. Um, I was just like enjoying Boulder, but literally with nothing. Like had no money, no what, no nothing. Right, I'm just going around finding apples, finding wild plums, eating those. I ended up deciding to go to Pearl Street, which is kind of the more like busy place. And there's this whole festival thing going on. There's live music. So next thing you know, I'm dancing to this like '80s cover band with a bunch of people. And it starts pouring rain, but again, I was already wet from jumping in before, so I didn't care. So I'm dancing in the rain, having time of my life. Ran into a friend, talked about music, and there's just like all these synchronicities that day. And I was very inspired by Peace Pilgrim and her message. Um, because to me, it's such a simple thing. It's like when you're fully in trust, you have everything that you need. And she's like, you'd be amazed how friendly people are. And granted, this was, you know, 30, 40 years ago now. Like, what she represented was super cool. And I'm still reading the book, still learning about her journey. I'm not one to ever idolize or put someone on a pedestal, but people do things in life that inspire us. Myself, like I get inspired by someone, maybe one point piece of their story, maybe the whole thing. And then it just deep, deepens and droppens, droppens my experience deeper. It drops me into a deeper experience of what I'm going through. And for me, it's such a huge piece of everything. I mean, getting COVID, this whole quarantine, all this stuff is, being in this state of trust, taking care of myself. Health is so important. She said in 30 years, she's never had any pain in her body, never been sick from doing this journey. She literally like all pain went away. Just, and that's a lot of walking, right? And she ate, didn't eat probably as much as most people ate. And she was healthy and she took care of herself by just like existing in the world and giving and doing good. And it's like, you don't need much. So if you're someone who's struggling and trying to make more money, sometimes we work so hard thinking we need so much, but most of what we need is provided for us. We can just have the basics. You could just make enough money just to have the basics covered and be happy because no matter how much money you have, if you're not happy, if you're not finding inner peace, you know, and finding your purpose, it doesn't matter how much you have. And we know this, right? But we keep doing it. We keep, oh, I'm looking, I just need to get more validation. Once I work hard enough and I get the validation and I get the funds and stuff, then I'll be okay. And it's this whole thing that just goes cyclically. But if you realize in this moment, you have everything that you need. And if you can start to take care of your health and get your life into control, you know, by, by not only your own hands, but having a sense of trust. Because I can say control and controlling can seem constricting, but what I really mean is getting your life in a place where you're in a state of flow. She was just living in flow. She was living in her purpose. And she's like, I have no fear. You know, I'm smart. I look both ways when I cross the road, but I don't have any fear. And I'm always provided for. And with nothing. Think She literally had nothing and she was always provided for. And inspired thousands and thousands of people. So check out Peace Pilgrim. Peace.